So we're venturing off into the woods. We're going into the woods. <laughs> uh, we've got to go to... I've completely forgotten. Completely forgotten the place. As you can, if you if you couldn't already tell, two separate separate recording sessions. <laughs> uh, today was one of my overtime days at work that I spoke about in last episode. Uh, so, I think I spoke about it in last episode. Maybe it was in this episode. Who knows? But we're going off road because we're going to the town to find out. Ooh shits! We're going to ooh shits. Ooh, ooh shits. We're going there. Anywho, I have upgraded. And by upgraded, it means I've spent some money. So we've gone back to the old classic Henry hair because I realised that um, his hair is like that in Kingdom Come 2. Uh, also, we're a high enough level now to be using the hunting bow that we got for winning the challenge. And I also bought this sword called Assassin because it was heaps better than the other one. Um... And yeah, I also evidently bought the, like, black witcher-looking outfit, because I think it looks pretty cool. Um, I'm going to need to buy, like, a couple of different bits and bobs that I can put on every so often. So, I was like, well, why not? Let's spend our wage on that. We get quite a fair amount of groschen for doing missions, so. Um, but we're going to stick with doing the main story for now. I'm going to go a little bit further. Um, before I start venturing off to doing side quests. I'm assuming that's ooh shits. And we're gonna go look for this fellow with a limp. I love riding my horse across the open fields. <laughs> oh, it's so nice. Especially after a, a nice shift at work. It's very relaxing to just <laughs> gallop across the open fields. We've discovered a shrine along the way. Find out where the limping bandit lives. Now then. Now then, now then, now then. Whoa, that is one big circle. Good grief. Okay, hold up. Right, we are going to have to ask around. I'm thinking maybe if we find like a tavern. Do we want to be going into the middle of town or do we want to be going here? I think we want to be going right into the middle of town. We just go straight in. Oh, look at this down here. There's a whole gathering of people. Oh, what is this? Oh, please be a cult. Oh, I really want a cult. Limpy Labosh. Limpy Labosh. Look how sick we look. Move along, citizens. Move along. There's nothing to see here. That's what you call nothing to see. I'd like to know what something to see looks like. Oh, it's raining. By the keys of St. Peter. This is all I need. We'll have to send word to Sir Hanush. That might not be necessary. Who are you? I'm Henry of Scalitz, in the service of Hanish's Captain Bernard. I'm investigating the attack at Neuhof, and I think this could be related. Well, I'm the bailiff of Auschwitz. And I say we don't want any of that kind of trouble around here. What makes you think this has anything to do with Neuhof? One of the folk at the stud farm recognized someone from Auschwitz among the bandits. We have no bandits or murderers around here. Really? They say you had a limp? Shit. Well, allow me to introduce you to Limpy Lubosh. Or all that's left of him. What do you mean? <gasps> oh my god! Fucking hell! You're telling me. Where's my chainmail? I had a chainmail that I should be wearing. That's all right with you. You can take this mess off my hands and welcome to it. Oh, a murder mystery. What else there is to find out, I don't know. But look and ask all you like. Oh, 
Oh, I love a murder mystery. Especially a medieval one. Who was Limpy Lubos? A poor crofter and a scoundrel. Can't say I'm too surprised what happened to him. He kept company with all sorts of vermin. He was always getting into some kind of trouble. Punch-ups in the tavern and what have you. Mm. How come he limped? He got that from some villainy or brawl a long time ago. Has he been up to anything suspicious lately? Hmm. So it takes off all of my armor for cutscenes, which is interesting. I like that actually. He was home the whole time, but he always kept everyone in the village at arm's length. Hmm. Did he have any kith or kin in the village? None. A loner he was. I don't know the last time I saw him with anyone. Is it possible he was a loose end, so they killed him? I happen to know where he was on the night of the Neuhof raid. I've no idea. He kept his distance from other folk, so you never knew if he was away or holed up at home. Hmm. When did you find the body? And did anyone see anything? Just now. And nobody saw or heard anything. I don't know how they could gut him like that without someone hearing him scream. Uh, could have been, like, fucking sedated with something. I want to learn to read. <laughs> yeah, who can teach me how to read? He could teach you. Brilliant. Brilliant. We do want to do that. Another thing about Lubos. No, I don't... Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think there is anything else to learn about him. Right. Marouche? Who are you? Do you know anything about Lubosh? Your clothes? Were you assaulted? Damn bandits. What's Maybe wrong with them? them? My clothes are fine. They're brand new. I've come in the name of Sahanish of Lyper. I'm investigating the massacre in Neuhof, and now a murder here as well. Can I ask you a few questions? I don't know how I can help you, but ask if you must. I shall. I must and I shall. Who was this Lubos who was murdered? You could see at first glance he was no good. I kept well out of his way. So he was a known loner. He was a known no-gooder. Do you know who Lubos used to spend time with? Kin or friends? As far as I know, he had nobody at all in this world. Weird, isn't it? Have you noticed anything suspicious recently? There wasn't sight or sound of him for a long time. And then yesterday, he turned up at the church and even talked to the parish priest. Right, so we're off to the church, aren't we? Probably had a bad conscience. Yeah. That's all. Thank you. I don't think I'm going to get anything good out of her apart from that. Pebbles! Come, my dear. Um, I believe the church is up on the hill, because I did, I did see what looked like a steeple. Let's bloody go. Oh, I love this. Oh, I love it. Oh, this is my favourite part of the game so far. <laughs> I genuinely love a good murder mystery. Thief! Thief! Oh, thief? Fucking thief. Oh, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. Go, 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 go. I'm fucking trying. Move out the way. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, I'm fucking trying. Oh, I can't. Oh, I got so close. <laughs> I will catch this fucking thief. Oh, I got him. Oh, fuck. Yes, nice. Holy shit. You showed him. Thank you. A thieving magpie. You can't trust anyone these days. Ahem. <clears throat> and just so you know, I'm no pinch purse. Here's a small reward. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, oh, 
small reward are you taking the piss? What has he got on him? Ooh, I will take a beige scarf and his remaining groschen and his lock picking things. Ooh, hunter gloves. Yes, please. They're probably a little bit better than my old bloody nasty brown gloves. Well, the beige scarf is not good. Stolen in God knows where. It's just, it identifies that it's stolen. That's a shame. Can I still wear it? I don't know if I want to with it being stolen, actually. Let's drop it again. Um, yeah, it's the same with the gloves, isn't it? My arm armour is already tw uh, 11, so just buy a plus one for stealing some... I don't want to risk anything, like, a plus one just for stealing some stuff. Like, as opposed to, like, possibly getting arrested. <laughs> Pebbles! Oh, there you are. Oh, I love this fucking horse. I'm really starting to get into this game a little bit more. Like, I think I'm embracing it a bit, a bit better <laughs> than when we first started. Some of the, like, some of the tedious, um... Like, the charcoal burner stuff is a bit annoying. Some of the, like, d dragging stuff out for the sake of dragging it out, you know. But when we're in the towns and we're talking to people and we're investigating shit like this, it's cool. Like, when we went to the stud farm and it was just a complete fucking mess, that was cool. And, like, at the start with the war and retreating to Talmberg, loved all that. So I like the big moments in this game. It's the little in-between sections I'm not a fan of. The blessings of our good lord be with you, father. I'm here in the name of Sahanish of Lyper, investigating the massacre at Neuhof, which seems to be connected to a murder here. Can I ask you a few questions? It seems Sir Hanush is employing children as investigators. But ask as you wish, boy. I hope this nasty business will be cleared up quickly. Did you know Lubosh? What was he like? A bit of a lost soul. Simple, rough fellow, but at heart I don't think he was such a bad person. Did you notice anything suspicious recently? My child, all sorts of suspicious things have been going on recently. People like Lubos don't know what to do about it, and sometimes they do stupid things. That's really not a lot of help to me, Father. I'm sorry to hear that. Do you know what Lubos was doing on the day Neuhoff was raided? Unfortunately, I do know, and I'd like to help you with your investigation, but I can't. What? I'm bound by certain vows that forbid me to tell you. Vows more important than catching dangerous murderers? There are laws of God above the laws of man, son, and one of those is the sanctity of the confessional. Father, surely you can't be serious. There must be situations in which you can make an exception. There are things that apply always, no matter what the circumstances, and this is one of them. Oh, I get a, f a plus three in my in my regular charisma, which will take me to nine. Let's but try Lubosh it. is dead. You can't hurt him. But if you don't tell me, more innocent people may die. If I told you, oh. I would be betraying a vow that's a cornerstone of the Holy Church. If people believe the sanctity of the confessional couldn't be trusted, the consequences would be even worse than that. Worse than the death of innocent Christians? Worse than the murderer escaping punishment? No one escapes punishment. Father, Lubosch was my only lead to the Neuhoff Raiders. Only he could tell me who was responsible for that massacre. If I don't find out who it was, it will probably happen again. Surely you wouldn't want that. I wouldn't. But I can't betray the sanctity of the confessional. I'll tell you what. Give me some time and I'll try to think up some way of helping you. Suppose we talk it over in the evening. In the tavern. Over a cup of good wine. Maybe we'll come up with something. Alright. Thank you, Father. Take care now. Hold up a second. Okay, I'm not very educated in religion. <laughs> the start of all good quotes, right? But me... Being a big gay, not very, not very educated on the whole religious thing. Is he allowed to drink? Can priests drink? Is that a thing? 
Isn't that weird? I don't know. There's a pretzel on there. Look at that. Bloody pretzel. Well, I've discovered the bakers by staring at the pretzel sign. Um, okay. Here's the tavern. I'm guessing. Aye. Aye, aye. Right, shall we wait here for like an hour? And see whether he shows up. Because we're technically already in the evening, so... We'll just cancel it there. That's probably going to be evening enough, right? Right? If it will cancel it, I got God, the waiting time in this game is quite ridiculous. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Ujit's Tavern. Ujit's Tavern? Godwin's Concubine? What's a concubine? Good grief. Hello. I'm sorry, I can't tell you everything. Oh, she's vanished. But maybe we can work something out. But oh, here we go. I'd like to hear something about you, my son. With whom do I have the honor? Where are you from? We got to trade info for info. I'm from Scalitz. Oh, I'm sorry. What about your kin? They're dead. Got to be honest with him. Here. Here. We'll drink to We're not really going to miss anything care. by not being honest to him, are we? Uh, not going to... Uh, no, that's not what I meant. I meant, like, we're not going to lose that's much. Terrible. It seems so pointless. By just being honest. We had no warning. They just appeared and began the slaughter. God knows why. They killed anyone who didn't make it to the shelter of the castle. My parents, my girl... Even the Deutsch who was on Sigismund's side. I didn't make it to the castle. I wanted to try and help my parents, but there was nothing I could do. Then I fled to Talmberg with the Cumans on my heels. They almost killed me. They slaughtered people in the surrounding villages. There was a pile of bodies in front of a church in Rovna. Folk who tried to take refuge there, but they... they... My poor child. May God grant them eternal rest. And how did you come to get this assignment? I'd have expected Sir Hanish to send that old grouch, Bernard. He did, but I found a witness and the trail led here to Ujit, so he sent me here to follow it up. Ah, well congratulations. It's nice to see someone using their head to find things out instead of torture. We'll have to drink to that. Now the most important thing. What actually happened in Noyle? The good folks here about are saying all kinds of terrible things. But I take most of it with a pinch of salt. It was quite bad. The rumours aren't exaggerated this time, unfortunately. The Neuhof stud the farm was raided by bandits, but they didn't come to pillage or even take the horses. They only wanted to kill. They maimed the horses and slaughtered some people. I'm sure they would have killed more, but the bandits quarrelled among themselves and broke off the attack. And judging by what's left of our Lubosch, they're still settling accounts. I see it's every bit as bad as people claimed. Dreadful. Well then, here's to those poor souls who had to die so pointlessly and so terribly. I've told you all about me. Now it's your turn, Father. You don't look much like our parish priest at home. Well, we've had an agreeable chat, but now let's get down to business. So, about this confessional seal. Do you really want more innocent people to die? <laughs> Henry, that's not how it works. There are matters in which you can't make exceptions because if you do it once, you'll forever be tempted to do it again. If people stop believing in the church because their confessional secrets are betrayed, they won't trust anyone. But he's and that's worse dead. Than even the most hideous crime. Oh, you're just making excuses. The people who say the church is corrupt are right. You don't care about anyone, only your own comfort. I'm sorry you see it that way. Really sorry. You have no idea how wrong you are. I always wondered about the things a priest tells his congregation. I'll have a beer. Where else do you get the ideas for your sermons? Well, Ujits isn't Prague. It's not enough to instruct people. They have to be entertained, too. If I only read from the Bible, I'd soon be preaching to an empty church. <laughs> Our priest wasn't exactly a bard. So what do you preach to your flock about? It has to be something top. Condemning vices. And, of course, describing them in detail. A tongue lashing about the two popes goes down well these days. And stories from real life with a nice moral to them. 
are popular as well, especially if they're about fornication and similar scandalous vices. Can you give me an example? Well, recently a priest by the name of Jan Hus started preaching in Prague in the Czech language, and the people liked it. I hear he always has a full house. A journeyman who heard him told me what Hus is preaching, and I like the sound of it. I'm thinking about putting it in my own repertoire. What's so amazing about it? The preaching of Master Jan Hus about Mother Church, the lamentable wealth in which the church is drowning has turned to poison, and nearly the whole of Christendom is contaminated. Just like a flock of hungry ravens, they settled on this land to devour every grain of gold and silver. They know no mercy. Their hearts are corrupted by longing for wealth, and they shamelessly profit from everything. You want to baptize a child? Hey, you want to steal and murder? Oh, it's true hey, that. You have absolution. What if the devil himself were to pay? Would he ascend to heaven too? With such money gained from the poor, they buy beautiful horses to ride and needless servants to pamper them. They gamble at dice and dress their whores in expensive furs. While Coming. Jesus Christ walked barefoot and had no place to lay his head. Look to your consciences, you robbers of the poor. <laughs> you are seen by oh God. my days. People too. Amen. Well, this Jan Hu's character is quite a rebel. Oh, he, he's oh, kind of right, though. Love it. I don't doubt it. Like, I can understand paying some stuff. We're going to get topical now. I can understand paying some stuff to churches because obviously they've got to stay around for people. But they are very fucking expensive. If you've ever tried to host anything in a church, pricey. I know better off than the folk I preach to. I'm one with them in poverty and suffering and everything that troubles them. I drink with them and curse those stuffed habits in Sasal Monastery. I was quite lucky because when I had to uh, book some, like book a service in a church, like I want to say like five or six years ago now. Thankfully, we got it for free because of the circumstances, um, and because of the circumstances we were in, the priest and uh, his wife were very very nice about it. So I will say, <laughs> but initially when they told us the price, it was not very cheap. Uh. Don't you think it's a bit odd when someone boozes and lives in sin with a woman and then criticizes the Pope for, be, for, for debauchery? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so he's just a hypocritical priest. Thanks for the sermon, but I think hey, I've been friend. morally uplifted enough. Oh, it's getting quite late. What are your plans, Father? What do you suppose? We have a drink, of course. God. Ah, that sounds like a good plan. Yeah, we've got to stay on side with him. Down. This guy is clearly the key. Oh, what is this? We've got some fucking music going on. Oh dear. Bailiff, come on over here. Sit down and have a drink with us. Don't vex me again, Father. It's three hours past dusk, and curfew is long gone. So what? So, I'll have you all whipped and put in the stocks, and I'll write a letter to the bishop about you, priest. Well, nothing to worry about then. Everyone knows the only one around here who can write is me. <laughs> Enough! Men! 
throw them out. Oh, that's brilliant. You looking for a fight? Henry, Are you joking? Up. We're gonna have a drunken brawl with a priest. Henry could barely stand. He's like, yeah, sure, let's go. Oh, I'm gonna beat the shit out of the bailiff. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Oh, I don't know who I'm supposed to be fighting against. Is it actually just him? Oh! Oh, oh fucking hell, give me a moment! Oh, oh shit! Oh! Oh, he's dropped like a sack of shit. Priest! Priest! Where's the priest? Where's the priest? The villagers. Oh fucking hell. Hey, where's your Oh god, what do I do? What? Climb the bell tower? What where am I? Father? Father's picking the the lock of the bell tower. Watch the step, my dears. Careful, you don't hurt yourself. Godwin, you're a buffoon. Oh, he's brilliant. Oh, he's actually brilliant. This is fantastic. What are we doing in this bloody... Oh, it's the bell tower of the church. I don't know what bell tower I thought it was. We can't do this, can we? Oh, it's a bit late now. wench. <laughs> This is wonderful. Oh my god. Ah, bloody hell. <laughs> They're just used to it. <laughs> this is the norm for them. And now my dears comes the climax of the evening. <laughs> Godwin, you old goat. Come here. Oh, please don't tell me it's going to show me it. Oh. <laughs> the priest has mounted up. Oh my god. The priest has mounted up. Oh, he's a dreadful priest. <laughs> he's the worst priest. Why are we in a field of sheep? <laughs> oh, this is ridiculous. Why, <laughs> Why is he bleating? <laughs> Oh my days. Oh, this reminds me of the... Is it the Sanguine's Rose mission from Skyrim? Oh, look at that well, shot. That was beautiful. I have to say that was a fine evening. Godwin, you beast! Get up! Do you hear me? Wake up, you drunkards! Oh, fuck it out! <laughs> Where the? Oh, what the? Oh, who the hell are you? <laughs> Henry, my great friend Henry. And we have a wonderful time. 
Well, you <sighs> certainly did, you old lecher. Now you better pull yourself together quick. You haven't much time. There's some water and something to eat on the table there, but if I were you, I would move my hairy arse before my flock eats me alive. <sighs> oh, stay funny in my head. Mm, my guts. <sighs> my poor suffering stomach. <sighs> What was that woman on about? Before my flock eats me alive, I've forgotten something. What have I forgotten? Where the fuck am I? What the <laughs> fuck am I? Oh. Oh. Mass. <laughs> oh shit, I have to say mass. I gotta say mass. You have to help me. <laughs> what? Ow. You're the priest. I can't do it in this state. Maybe the liturgy. But I have to give a sermon as well. Oh, this is a disaster. They're going to excommunicate me. I'd like to help you, but you can. You can do the sermon for me. Are you what? daft? So, first, I investigate a murder no one wants investigated. Then I drunkenly keep the whole town up all night. And now you want me to preach at them from the pulpit? Do you want them to burn us at the stake? No. No, I've got it. Suppose it's Sir Ratzig's protege. You just came from studying in Prague. And you want to share the words of Master Jan Hus, who you recently heard preaching there. Henry, look. From what I remember, we might have overdone it a bit last night. A bit. And if the bailiff or someone else complains about me, the bishops can have my guts for garters. So I'd appreciate it. If you stop gaping at me like a stuffed squirrel and start helping. You're mad. You're start raving mad. I'm not. It's a perfect plan. It's flawless. <coughs> oh. oh, God, stop it. This? If you help me with this, I'll tell you who Lubosh's cronies are. Fucking hell. So all at once, the confessional seal isn't so sacred? Don't mock me. I won't give you a second chance. We'll never get away with it. Not if you make a hash of it. Well, all right. But I can't make any promises about what will happen. No, neither can I. What do you want me to do, exactly? I'll go and start the liturgy. Then I'll introduce you. You give the sermon I told you yesterday in the tavern, and that's that. No need to drag it out. If it turns out well, I'll tell you what I know about Lubo. Christ almighty. Fine then. We have a deal. Wonderful. Let's get to it then. I thought he'd never show up. The swill pup. Look at him. He can hardly walk after his capers last night. You were with them, you beast. Just you wait. Look at it. Mother of God. Any minute now, he'll throw up. This is fantastic. I couldn't sleep a wink last night with all that clang. <clears throat> what about the bailiff? Because we did knock him out. In nomine patres, et fili, et spiritus sancti. Amen. Accepit panem in sanctas at venerabiles amanus suas. We've really got to get ourselves some nicer pants. <laughs> he just burp. He sounds like me when I'm recording. In meam commemoration. Who is that? Brothers and sisters, you may have had the honor of meeting Henry from Scholars, who is here at the behest of Sir Hanush to investigate that heinous crime at Neuhof. You might not know that Henry recently visited Prague, where, by the grace of God, 
was able to hear Master Jan Hus from the esteemed Charles University preaching. I've managed to persuade Henry to stand here today in my stead and tell us what he heard. Because, as you all probably know, Jan Hus is a very popular preacher in Prague. So Henry, you may begin. <laughs> oh no. <clears throat> oh no. Uh, shit. Brothers and sisters, let me get straight to the point. I'd like to talk about the church and how corrupt it is. That boy has a cheek. So far, so good. One should not believe in the church, because the church is not God. God is above all things, and the church is but a means to salvation, which the prelates do not care to hear. He's right. Oh, they're going for it. They're going for it. <clears throat> Fantastic. It is the corruption of God's pastors here on earth that has brought misfortune on our heads. Uh, plague, humans, hunger, and, and, and chaos. The accursed wealth that the church is drowning in is poisoning almost the whole of Christendom. When dogs are fighting over a bone, take the bone and they will stop. Just like the flock of ravens that has descended on this land to peck up every speck of gold and silver. They show no mercy. Their hearts are poisoned. Oh, he's really going for it. They trade everything. Everything is for sale. You want to baptize a child? Pay. You want to steal and murder? Pay and you will have absolution. And the prelates sin and give themselves absolution. For shame. Shame upon them. Yes, they're going for it. They're going for it. Oh, uh, yeah, let's maybe not talk about those two. It is the custom of the gluttonous prelates and monks to preach against sin. But what do they know of us ordinary folk? Let us remember the marriage at Cana, where our Lord Jesus Christ himself feasted with the other guests and drank his fill. And when the wine was gone, he performed a miracle and created more. He, whose companions were poor travellers, simple folk, prostitutes and troublemakers, performed a miracle so the feast could continue. Now that's the kind of sermon I like to hear. No, brothers and sisters. Jesus did not condemn alcohol. Drink to lighten the cross you bear in this veil of tears, but not with such abandon that you cannot keep holy the Sabbath. For there should be moderation in all things, and it is not drinking itself that is sinful, but intemperance and beastly indulgence. He's right. We're going to keep going modestly. <laughs> Enough about sin, which the prelates are so fond of preaching about, and whose absolution they promise if you only pay enough coin to Mother Church. What if the devil himself were to pay? Will the bishops tell us he too would ascend to heaven? And what about those bishops? They sin without remorse, and with the money grasped from the poor for indulgences, they keep fine horses and hordes of servants to pamper them. They play dice and garb their mistresses in expensive furs, while Christ, the Lamb of God, walked barefoot and had nowhere to lay his head. Look to your consciences, you robbers of the poor, for you are seen by God and his people too. Down with the prelates. Away with them. We're fortunate to have our good father Godwin. At least he's a fair and simple man. Um... God Let's stick up for Godwin. Why not? He is filled with righteous wrath. But those He's going to help us. So. Of souls instead seek mammon and the idle comfort of lucrative posts. Blessed are the shepherds who share the poverty of their flock, who are as one with you and bear with you the burden of this earthly pilgrimage, who do not condemn your venial sins. I all honour to Godwin. Let him drink like one of us. That is all I heard in Prague. Amen. Well done, bloody hell. He really went for it and he delivered, eh? They loved it. The lad spoke well, considering what a soak he is. 
tastes right, that was. The young man shouldn't drink so much, but the Lord's given him a I'm silver glad he tongue. Came here. I don't suppose I'll ever get to Prague. We told him nicely. Well, well, my boy, you have talent, and I can't deny it. And you pulled a thorn from my side. I almost didn't make it. Yeah, I noticed. I wasn't the only one. Well, what's to be done? I'll make it up somehow. So, about our bargain. Although it's a sin. Uh, so gluttony and fornication. God does forgive a penitent. So, what did Limpy Lubosch tell you? Was he at Neuhof that day? Who was with him? And, and, and where are they now? Now slow down. I'm sorry, but he didn't tell me that much. Oh, what the fuck? Don't let me down after all I've been. Exactly, come on. For you? Well, now Lubos came to me shortly after it happened. And his conscience was gnawing at him. And I must say, uh, in the end, he turned out to be a better man than he looked. He said they'd been hired through some crony of theirs. And at first they were just to steal some horses. But then it all turned sour and people started getting killed. And neither he nor his cronies wanted anything to do with that. So they fell out from the gang and fled. Fell out? Yeah, there was a body found in the woods by Neuhoff. Um, that would explain something. Uh, Lubos kept jabbering that he wasn't a murderer, that he didn't want to do it. So I know that Lubos killed the murderer and he's dead too. The trouble is, I need to find the ones who are still alive. I need names and places. Did he mention any of the others? Uh, only nicknames. Uh, talked about some fella called Riki from Ledechko. Pious, Timmy. Pious. <laughs> that lot are about as pious as I am ordained. Nonsense. You would make an excellent priest. And anyhow, with your skills, you ought to be able to sniff out this Riki from Ledechko, right? <laughs> Well, we'll have to now. There's not much else to go on. Let's hope he's not hanging from the wall, too. <sighs> Indeed. And I'd hate to be excommunicated for nothing. Anyhow, good luck. You watch out for yourself. These people clearly mean business. And I'd like to raise a tankard with you again sometime. Yeah, I'll try. Although I'm not sure I'd survive another night of your debauchery. And if anyone should ask, you heard nothing from me. I'll deny everything. I don't doubt it.